Want to learn about a type of brush radiation that can be done in one week rather than four to six weeks? We will teach you all about it. If you are planning with your breast surgeon to have a lumpectomy for breast cancer, you will likely need breast radiation to lessen the chance that it will grow back in that area of the breast. The standard of care is whole breast radiation therapy, but a short one week course of radiation using special devices placed inside the breast is an option for some women. This is called breast brachytherapy and the results are excellent in well-selected patients. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you exactly what breast cancer brachytherapy is and how it's different from whole breast radiation, which is the standard of care. Who might benefit and qualify for breast brachytherapy? Because not everyone does. And I'm gonna share with you some situations where some choose to have brachytherapy rather than whole breast radiation. And I'll go over what to expect and some of the side effects. So let's get started. So what is the type of breast cancer radiation called breast brachytherapy? Well, if you're gonna have a lumpectomy for an early stage breast cancer, small tumor, no evidence of cancer in your lymph nodes, your surgeon will remove the lump, but cancer cells sometimes can be left behind, even though we don't see anything on the edges of what we removed on the tumor. Some cancer cells can be left in the breast and there's a chance of cancer growing back in that area of the breast. So that's why we typically add radiation after a lumpectomy to give you a long-term low chance of your cancer growing back. Whole breast radiation, where the entire breast is irradiated, kind of from outside the breast, is the standard of care and works great. But there are techniques where you can radiate the breast from the inside. You place a device into the breast, into the area where the surgery was, and from the inside, we can irradiate just the edges of where the tumor was removed, applying the radiation to the area where it's most likely to grow back. And that device can be placed on, generally under some local anesthesia, some numbing medicine. But you have to manage that device for about seven to 10 days, keep a bandage on it, wear it underneath your clothes. But at the end of your radiation, it can slide, be, be removed, by your radiation oncologist and you're done with surgery and shortly after surgery, a couple weeks later you do the radiation, you're done. The concept here is to get through radiation quickly, radiate the area at most risk for cancer growing back. It's not perfect, but it is felt to be an excellent alternative in extremely well-selected patients and we're going to go through that next. So who qualifies for breast brachytherapy? Well, of all women who are diagnosed with breast cancer, only a small proportion may consider breast brachytherapy. So first of all, you gotta get a lumpectomy, not a mastectomy. If you have an early stage breast cancer, stage one, and not everyone that's a stage one breast cancer is a candidate, and a few patients that might have stage two breast cancer may be candidates. Tiny, favorable, breast cancers, estrogen receptor positive, and the smaller the tumor, the better. And patients that not up front, we think are gonna need chemotherapy. So those are some tumor cancer factors. Another qualifying aspect are the technical considerations. Sometimes a woman has a very large breast and they're a great candidate. Sometimes they have a very small breast and they're not a candidate. Sometimes the tumor's too close to the skin or the type of surgery and the extent of the surgery does not allow you to be a candidate for brachytherapy. Brachytherapy, however, has been added to the National Cancer Treatment Guidelines, the NCCN guidelines, as a reasonable alternative to whole breast radiation in very well-selected patients. Breast brachytherapy is not offered everywhere, and, if it, and it's okay if it's not offered in your community because you must remember that whole breast radiation is still considered the standard of care for early stage breast cancer if you've had a lumpectomy. In what situations do some choose to have brachytherapy rather than whole breast radiation? Well, if you live close to a radiation center, it's pretty easy for you to get whole breast radiation over a four to six week period of time by going to the cancer center 
and having radiation in and out the door in about 20 minutes, Monday through Friday, for a four to six week period of time. And you really don't want to create a gap or a vacation during that time period. But some people do not live close to a radiation center. Maybe have to travel an hour, two hours, or three hours, or take a ferry from where they live over to the city. And that time commitment back and forth for 30 treatments is really onerous. And that is a reason why many like the concept of breast brachytherapy. Get it done in a week and you're done. There are other reasons, but those are a few of the travel and time reasons. Many, however, like the concept of radiating just the area where the cancer cells are most likely to come back within a lumpectomy area of the breast, rather than radiating the entire breast, areas of breast tissue that are radiated that are far away from where your cancer was. And although whole breast radiation is definitely a standard of care, some like that concept to focally treat that area and not treat tissue and breast tissue that may not need radiation. What is the timeline and what to expect if you undergo breast brachytherapy? Well, first of all, it takes planning. Your breast surgeon has to assess you and see if you're a candidate and offer it to you. And if that's the case, you generally then, before surgery, go and visit with the radiation oncologist to see if they agree and to start planning this. You then have surgery. And prior to surgery, you generally undergo a breast MRI in addition to your mammogram and ultrasound just to make sure nothing else is going on in your breast. You finish your surgery, you come visit with your surgeon, you make sure that there's no cancer in your lymph nodes and some other aspects about your cancer. Make sure you got, the surgeon got around the cancer well. And then in a few days, within a week or so, you will come back and usually visit with your surgeon, but sometimes there are other physicians that can do this, and place a catheter device, a radiation catheter device, into the breast, into the area where the surgery was. And that's done with uh, some numbing medicine. You're awake, it's tolerable, but it is a procedure. That's bandaged, you manage that. So usually your catheter is placed on a Thursday or Friday. You visit with the radiation center just to make sure everything is set and ready to go for Monday. And then you do brachytherapy, generally over a five day period of time. So you start Monday, you go twice a day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday. So if you're going to the radiation center in the morning and then at lunch or at lunch and then end of the day, it's a full-time job. And then if everything goes well with your radiation on Friday, the radiation oncologist can remove the catheter, doesn't really hurt coming out, and you're done. There are always a few risks and complications. You can get an infection with the catheter. It can create an infection in your breast. There are some other changes with radiation which we cover elsewhere. That's a good timeline of what to expect with breast brachytherapy. If you're interested in dedicating just one week to your breast radiation rather than four to six weeks, you must talk with your breast surgeon before surgery. If you are a candidate for breast brachytherapy, then you must have a very serious discussion about the advantages and disadvantages comparing breast brachytherapy and whole breast radiation. To learn more about breast brachytherapy radiation, visit the Breast Cancer School for Patients, where we will teach you everything you need to know. We're here to help you get the best possible breast cancer care in your community. Register on our website to get our list of questions to prepare you for your next doctor visit.